Hi, everybody. I'm John from Fola Capital, and I'm thrilled to be here today. I love doing these, and uh, we got a great crew with us today to represent one of our newest clients. And I'm actually very happy this is a virtual presentation today because all of them are armed and I'm not. So they're actually at their business right now as we speak, and we'll get into that in a minute, but I'm just thrilled to be here. And thank you for making the time today to be with us. If you're watching the recording as well, thank you. So without any further ado, today's topic is an investment opportunity in all American gunslingers. And it's an opportunity to support this veteran run, veteran owned business, small business based in Florida. One quick disclaimer is this, we're going to talk about forward looking statements. We're going to talk about projections that we have, and we're going to make some generalizations around that. Just take a moment to read this slide. What it covers is this is a Securities and Exchange Commission registered offering. And as such, we have to abide by SEC rules around disclosure of risks and other things related to this investment. And we certainly do so in all the documentation that's available to you at that link that I described. But specific to projections, we're going to make some assumptions about the future that may or may not turn out. Might do better than the projections, might do a little less than projections, but uh, nonetheless, please take a moment to read this disclaimer. And the most important line is the last line on this slide. All the information that is available to make an investment decision is located on our platform. And that is the source of truth for what you can consider for this particular investment opportunity. So without any further ado, I'm going to turn it over to the main characters of today's show, and that is the team. So uh, I'm going to turn it over to you guys. Take it from here. Yes, my name is Joe Betts. I am the president of All-American Gunslingers, and I am also the director of training. Uh, I have uh, NRA certification, and I also have USCCA certification, as well as some mark for ship instruction uh, during my time in the Marine Corps. Uh, you also have Raymond Krause. Uh, he's a little occupied right now, but he is the vice president of All-American Gunslingers. He is the director of range operations, as you can see. My name is Sarah Goldsmith, and I am the treasurer for All American Gunslingers, and I'm also the director of retail operations. I have several years of experience selling pretty much anything you could you could you could buy. So I I use that experience uh, to push me forward and to provide the best experience in customer service and retail as I can. And I'm Cody Klein. I am the secretary of All-American Gunslingers, and I'm also the director of Gunsmith Operation. I've spent over six years in this industry in various roles, and the primary role I've played is as Gunsmith. And I've learned several things, both in school and Colorado School of Trades, getting my certification, as well as the three and a half years since I entered this on the consumer side. Next slide. So going over what we're going to be talking about today. So our, we are a firearms store here in Newport Ritchie. It's a little Northwest of Tampa here in Florida. Uh, we have a retail store, firing range, gunsmithing and training. Our management team, as we discussed is consists of four people, two of which were former Marines, that being Joe and Ray. And we'll also go over a uh, financial slide going over all of our projections. Our goal is to raise up to 1.25 million. That's going to help uh, fully open the range. All we have left is getting in rentals, more ammunition, things of that sort. And it also will help us open up our retail floor. As you can see behind Sarah, we are pretty well set up, but we need inventory, employees, and then just some working capital. Our revenue share agreement is set up to return 1.7 times your investment. Yeah, the next slide, let's go over our forms of revenue. So our primary source of revenue is going to be the rain. We are open 10 to 8, seven days a week. So that's 70 hours per week of public use of our rain. We also have retail. Uh, we will be selling handguns, long guns, any ammunition, accessories, optics, apparel, anything in the industry you maybe want. Uh, Joe will also be offering training. We will be covering classes anywhere from uh, children's safety to basic pistol and rifle safety to advanced uh, use of your pistol and rifles, including movement and shooting. We'll be also be holding events. We'll be holding a variety. We'll have ladies night, 
other public events, as well as holding private events for companies and even law enforcement agencies that want to use our classroom and our range. And then, of course, we offer our gunsmith services. We have a full gunsmith shop complete with heavy machinery, such as a lathe, mill, welder, as well as the expertise on how to use it all. Anything else you all want to chime in with? All right, next slide. Here you can see the demographics of the area on that map in the lower right. Um, it's centered on our current location. And then that red circle is going to be 20 miles and that blue circle is going to be a 30 mile radius. Um, within that over 700 square mile area, you can see that there are only 13 other ranges. And what that map doesn't necessarily show is that population density. But you can see in that graphic on the left hand side that in that 30 mile radius, we have nearly 2 million adults. And that includes over 80,000 handgun shooters and nearly 50,000 shotgun and rifle shooters. And that, those numbers are only poised to grow given that more people are learning to appreciate and respect firearms instead of fear them. Anything else? I just wanted to add that Newport Ritchie is the fifth largest growing city in Florida this year, which means it's just adding to the population, which also means more people coming into our area. All right, next slide. Here we just have a timeline of some of the major milestones within our company. So we founded at the end of April last year. And then later in November, around the same time, we signed our lease for this facility. And then we got some of our uh, gunsmithing equipment. This is when we got our lathe and our mill, the big equipment, and we got it used, which is why we got it so early. Once we had signed the lease, that allowed us to move forward with all of our state local and federal uh, licenses. Somehow the federal licenses were the easiest ones to obtain. And so in February of this year, we received all our licenses from the ATF. The county and state took another few months. At the beginning of April, we were good to go. From there, we just had to button up a few more things, get in some inventory, and we were able to soft opening last month on the 2nd. And from there, we're just continuing to grow from the second to today. You can see on Google, on Facebook, we've gotten a bunch of feedback. All of it's been overwhelmingly positive. Is there anything else you'd like to add? All right, next slide. So these are our prices, some information about the range. We have 14 lanes open to the public and they go out to 25 yards. We do have an automated target retrieval system. Some ranges have set distances, just stands out there that you have to go and attach your targets to. The inconvenience about that is that you don't have the flexibility of shooting at any distance. Plus the range has to go cold for you to change anything out. So everyone else is dependent on you and you're dependent on everyone else. With our automated target retrieval, not only can you shoot at whatever distance up to that 25 yards, but you're also completely independent of any other shooters on the line. And Arguably, most importantly about our range is that we're temperature controlled. We're in Florida, we're going into the summer, it gets hot, it doesn't really ever get cold. OSHA states that we have to pump in natural air straight from outside into our range to prevent a safe environment and keep those lead levels down. So we have a secondary cooling system in that range to keep it as cool as we can. And we're able to maintain a constant 71 degree temperature. Customers about a third of the time mentioned specifically that they were comfortable while shooting and that they weren't sweating. When a customer walks in, it is $17 an hour to rent that lane. If they want to have an additional shooter on that line, that is an additional $10. We do allow up to sh three shooters per lane. So that's a maximum of $37 an hour a lane. Um, at the end of each night, we do collect our brass for recycling. We do use a company that is focused on sustainability. So we sell the brass off to them. They recycle it, they melt it down, um, and it becomes any number of new brass items, including new casings. On a much less frequent basis, we do the same thing with our lead. Um, they come in, they completely revamp the backstop, and they take all that lead, 
they could dig a hole in the ground, dump it all in and label it hazmat disposal. But because of their focus on sustainability, they make sure to cast it down and put it into any number of applications for lead. Anything else, Joe Ray Eric? One thing I did want to add is that we do offer military discounts. Yes, we do offer a 10% military discount for the rain, just to help honor those who serve. All right. We also offer memberships. These are for if you want to come in and you really like our range, you want to try to save a little bit of money. Our basic is $30 a month. You can reserve a lane up to a day in advance, and it covers your shooting fee. Our standard is a little more at $50 a month. You can reserve a lane up to a week in advance. Then not only does it cover your shooting fee, but you also get five guest passes annually, and you also get 5% off of any ammunition and apparel. Our advance is $70 a month. You can also reserve up to a week in advance, and it gives you the greatest discounts of one guest pass per month and then 10% off ammunition and apparel plus 5% off optics. People have been really enjoying our, me our memberships. They really like it when I tell them you shoot twice with your basic membership, shoot twice a month, you're already saving money. I like to tell them that the advanced membership is for if you really like coming to us, you want no muss, no fuss, just come in here for everything, gets you the greatest discounts off of ammunition and apparel. Most opportunities to bring your friends in. And then the standard is just a great middle ground. Is there anything else y'all would like to add about the memberships? The one thing I did want to mention was the family discount where we have a family membership. So the first person that gets their membership pays the normal standard fee. And then the family member pays 20, gets a 25% discount on their membership. I yeah. also. I'd also like to throw in that not only do we have this broken down for monthly, but we also have it our annual rate as well. So the $30 basic, that's just for the month. For annual, we ask for 300 And then the standard is $50 a month, and we ask for 500 for the year. And then advanced is at 70 for the month. And, we're at, and for annual, that would be 700 for the year. I would also like to add that we do have a range card for the ones that do not really want to commit. It is 10 visits. It is $150 and it reduces the range fee down to $15 a visit and it does not expire. Okay. We also have a retail area. We have a 750 square square foot dedicated retail space. It's going to have an initial inventory valued at 150000 and it's going to be handguns, ammunition, long guns, optics, apparel, everything, everything really in this industry that someone could want. We're going to primarily focus on handguns and handgun ammunition because we have that 25-yard range. People are more than welcome to shoot their rifles and their shotguns on our range. We do have some limitations just to maintain a safe environment, but we do allow long guns, but they tend to prefer to shoot just handguns at this relatively shorter distance. So because of that, we're focusing on something that they can take, buy, and then go right over to our range and shoot. Anything else you'd like to add, Sarek? I think you got okay. it pretty much covered. Next slide. These are our projections. So as you can see, year one, we're projected to uh, have over 1.8 million in revenue with almost $100,000 of net income. The reason for that disparity has been that internet market. They've driven down the profit margins. So we have to, we're trying to maintain a welcoming environment, not price gouge people. So we have to be at least competitive with those online prices. We're able to stay above water by diversifying our revenue so much and offering such a warm and welcoming environment. Over the course of those five years, that 1.8 is going to turn into nearly 2.4 million. And that almost $100,000 of income is going to turn into over 300,000. 
the breakdown of our projected revenue is 34% retail. That includes everything sold, even the ammunition to go onto the range. And 23% on the range. That includes rentals, INE rentals, targets, and range time. Gunsmithing is projected to make up 21% of our revenue. We have, we've had a lot of people come in and ask about gunsmithing services, and we've even completed several jobs for them. If you rem recall back to the map of the ranges in the area, that map would be blank if it was a map of local gunsmiths. Stores like to have an armor on hand, but I think about an armor as assembling Legos. They put the pieces together. They do have to know the gun and know what piece goes where but a gunsmith can actually modify the pieces, make it fit, go a little more in depth into the gun. So very, very quickly, you go out of the scope of an armor and into the scope of a gunsmith. Memberships are scheduled to make 17% of our revenue. Memberships are great. They're scheduled to make us more money while saving the customer money. The way that works is we have consistent money coming in month to month to help us pay the bills. Plus, customers are more inclined to go shoot somewhere where they already have a membership. So they're more inclined to feed into that retail of purchasing ammunition, a new firearm, or whatever accessory they may want. Training is scheduled to make up 5% of our revenue. And that's because we only have one classroom. And for a lot of the classes, they take up our range. So we're going to be running our classes as often as we can, but we still have to accommodate our space and other shooters that may want to just shoot. Our contract and event income is scheduled to make up 1%, and that's going to be not only uh, company contracts, ladies' nights, but also law enforcement contracts. We are open from 10 to 8 every day. We have set aside three hours in the morning from 7 a.m. to 10 a.m. for law enforcement contracts. And that way they can come in, they can shoot. They are required to provide their own range safety officer. And from there, they can do pretty much whatever they'd like. Talking to various law enforcement agencies around, they've been shut out by our competition because they don't want the law enforcement officers to train how they would actually use. They don't want drawing from the holster or shooting in front of the firing line or whatever that's inhibiting them. Do we have anything else to share on the financial? All right. Well, that's great. We've got a few questions that have come in. Uh, you did a great job. Uh, again, like I said earlier, we're just hitting the wave tops of the information that's on the offering site itself. Uh, again, I'd encourage you to click the link there to the offering site and get a lot more details in terms of the business plan, the projections. And uh, including reviewed financials from a third-party CPA firm that's part of the regulations on how they set up their financials. All of that is at the offering site. But some, some questions have come in. I don't know which one of you guys wants to answer this, but uh, and I've got a few of my own based on what you guys said. But what makes your store different than the others you mentioned that are in the area? I think it's gunsmithing, but I don't want to answer for you. Like, what makes your store worth driving to versus someone that might even be closer to one of the other ranges? So by far, it's our customer service. We relate to the customer and as soon as they come through the door, they're greeted, they're greeted, or they're even greeted on the way out. And it's always a very inviting environment for them. We want our customers to feel comfortable, but we also want to feel, have them feel informed. We want them to know that we appreciate their business as much as they appreciate coming into our range. Cool. Exactly. Yeah. If you think back 30, 40 years, shooting was really an old men's club. You had a bunch of grumpy old dudes. And that mentality has persisted up until now. And some of our local competition still maintains that mentality. So where you focus super hard on that customer service to be just that much different and that much more welcoming. I just also wanted to say our customer service shows, especially if you look at our reviews on Facebook and Instagram, uh, people have nothing but nice things to say, not only about our environment, the area, but also us that are working in there. 
Yeah, and that's for sure. And I applaud you guys from actually broadcasting from the range itself. I should have said that up front. All four of these guys are actually at the range right now, including Raymond back there with his face to the customer, demonstrating that customer service as we speak. So that's pretty cool, guys. What about legislation? I know Florida is a pretty well-known, you know, gun-friendly state, but is there any legislative issues that you guys keep an eye on or worried about, or it might actually help the business? Like, where are you on that spectrum? Yeah. So there's always some sort of push in Congress, whether it be state or federal, there's always going to be some sort of push to ban guns in some fashion. There's been a new assault weapons bill in Congress every year for as long as I can remember. That is just white noise. If you look at what's actually getting done, the Supreme Court made a ruling on firearms in the 1960s. And then the next one they made was in 2008. Um, from there, especially under Biden's pre presidency, the Supreme Court has been making ruling after ruling after ruling in this industry. And it's all been very favorable towards gun owners. If you recall, Bruin versus New York, they, the Supreme Court stated that it is unconstitutional to be a May issue state when it comes to a concealed carry permit. Basically, they stated that if the state cannot find a reason to not issue you a concealed carry permit, they have to. And it's just been a lot of similar rulings that's been very freeing to the industry. Cool. Anybody also, else? also legislative wise, as soon as they mention something about taking our firearms or trying to control our firearms, there is a mass buy of those firearms prior to them trying to put any kind of legislation in there. Cool. All right. This one, I'm just going to read verbatim. It says, what is the forecast for the customer base? In what way is it changing? Yeah, so our customer base, our customer base is really always growing. Very few people are educated on guns, know what they're talking about, and aren't open to the idea of shooting, even if they decide it's not for them. The vast majority of the industry of the customer base is growing because people get more informed. People realize that you know, the politicians themselves don't know what they're talking about, that semi-automatic is not the same as fully automatic, and they just come to shoot, they create, they find a nice welcoming range like ours, and they come back more and more. The largest growing demographic in the industry is actually women. The pandemic had a huge run on guns. A lot of people realized that they weren't things to fear, and a lot of people realize that when things go really wrong, the police aren't really there to actually help. They realize that their safety is in their own hands and that scared particularly women because they've been taught to rely on the police. And so because of that, we have to not market towards women, but not only create a welcoming environment for them, but think of them when we're ordering inventory. Get, you know, guns that may fit smaller hands a little better and just make sure we have women on staff that will be more knowledgeable on the various aspects of shooting and more specifically carrying a gun as a woman. Cool. As you were given that answer, a question came in, what will you be doing to attract more women? They are probably the fastest growing segment of the gun market. So I, I think you spoke to that, but did anybody want to add to that since the question just came in on that? I think it's also just knowledge. Of, of their firearm, they, it's un unfortunate for women. They purchase a firearm for one, they don't want to be a victim or two, they were a victim and coming in here and training them, we have to have that understanding and kind of like slow walk them into what it is that they want to kind of accomplish when purchasing a firearm. That's uh, an interesting perspective. Also part of selling a, a woman a firearm if she's with her husband, boyfriend, brother, what have you, oftentimes the guy tries to say what she needs. And that is quite counterproductive since everyone's hands are different and everyone's hands fit on guns differently. And so you have to not be dismissive of the guy, but you have to really try to focus on 
that woman and what she wants rather than what the guy thinks she wants. And so it's a delicate balance trying to not offend the guy, but trying to empower the woman into making her own choice and making sure she's making an informed one. Yeah, good stuff, guys. Here's another one that came in. I, I guess there was another range in the same exact location. You know, why did previous ranges fail in the same location is the question. What, what do you guys say to that? So oh. we've heard several different reasons why. And from, at least from what we've heard from reputable sources, it was due to some business dealings that didn't go in favor with between companies. Cody, I, I see what might want to chime in on that one too. Yeah, it seemed to be internal disputes. A while ago, there were some less than legal dealings. So a similar store got shut down. So it was, it was really just internal, internal strife and not staying up to date. It, there was no outside influence. It wasn't that there wasn't a demand. It wasn't that there is a great competitor two doors down that takes all our business. Yeah. Well, you've had some success since your soft launch. That's for sure. And that's a fact. What, can you talk to me a little bit more about memberships? Are memberships kind of the canary in the mine? Like what's the correlation between your trend on memberships and the rest of your business model? Is there one? If not, that's fine. But have you guys kind of put some thought into that? Yeah, so ideally, we'd like to make nothing on range fees and everything on membership. Um, we use the memberships sort of as a litmus test, and it is a little skewed due to a local competitor that is 15 minutes down the road. But we use it as a litmus test for, is the customer being honest when they say they liked our facility? Or are they just saying that to our face to appease us? We've had a lot of people come in between memberships and the range cards, actually. We've had a lot of people come in, not sure if they want a membership. They shoot, they decide they do. We do run a, an offer where if they come in, shoot, pay for the range time, and then after they come out, decide they want to sign up for a membership, we do take that range fee off. And people have been re very receptive of that. And that has actually pushed a lot of memberships. We have had a, a handful of people who have a membership at our competitor just down the road. They refuse to sign up for a membership with us while they still have another active one down the road. You know, it's just a point of pride. They don't want two memberships to two different ranges. They do still come to us to shoot over them. Excellent. Any other comments, guys? All right. Well, we like to keep these nice and short, which we have. I do want to mention these guys are actually running their business right now. Thanks for taking the time out to do this webinar for the group that's here today and the many that'll watch the recording going forward. Please, if you're here live today, uh, please check out the offering on our site, folacapital.com. There's an offering tab there, and then you can find all American gunslingers offering right there. You click on that tile and uh, it'll uh, enlarge for you and you can get to all the documents and a lot of other material that we uh, have not covered today, but we thank you for your interest in this offering. And once again, I want to thank you on behalf of Foley Capital and behalf of our All-American Gunslingers team here. Thanks for your interest and have a great day. Thank you.